Christmas trees. Hello, everybody. He asked me a question 10 seconds before I go live. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the workshop. Mark here. Hope you're all well. Hope you're all staying warm. It's turned a bit chilly, isn't it? Um, and long sleeves. Right. Just a quick one tonight. Uh, who have I got in helping me? Right. So she We've said. got Ruby from Canada. Hi, Ruby. Oh, and Terry. From England. Hello, everybody. <laughs> yeah, I've found that way. I've just noticed Kim's in. Hi, Kim. Start the countdown. 19, 18, 17, 16. What's that? 12, 11, <laughs> 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. She's gone. Right. So Kim's not here Hi. anymore. Bye, Kim. Yes. <laughs> that worked. She was just checking to make sure you were actually here. You have that effect, Mark. You have that effect. I was here and I was on my own. I do love her to bits, but she, she doesn't like what turning. So she comes in, says hello, and then goes back to watching Coronation Street. Right, so I've got Ruby and Terry here helping. Sorry for the uh, distraction. Um, what am I doing tonight? Right. I Christmas hope Street. you're wood turning. <laughs> well, yeah. sort of. <laughs> As the title said, it could be anything. What I'm doing tonight, I'm going to do just a very simple little project because apparently it's that time of year. So. Is it? Yeah. I do these. Christmas. Yeah, apparently so. Another month ago, according, yeah. According to Colwyn, it's the best time of year. Um, so. I don't think that'll sit there. These are called heel cut, heel cut Christmas trees. So they're done with a skew, and you go backwards with the skew using the heel of the skew to create these ruffles. Oh, and so you spray you them say green. Heel cut or shield cut? Heel cut. And then, uh, so they're going to sit back here because my little forest. Okay. I'll make four or five. Or five of these tonight. And while I'm doing that, these guys will welcome you all in. Tommy who's here. Well, I'll let Terry do that. Okay. Well, Ruby clears the first in the chat. Ruby clears the first in the chat. So you got to get in everywhere. Look. No. Gerard the French Turner Ger clearly Ger follows her. Gerard was in. Gerard was in for all. Oh, you're on top of my list here, but I'll, I'll, Gerard was first in, and Bonjour Gerard. Ruby was second. Brian El Tonero de Madeira was next, followed by Andy from Door 60. Gerard, the French term. Pete Twisted Trees came in at the time, so did I. And then True Grit finishes. Hello, Dan or Katie, one of the two, or both. Hugh from Wouldn't It Be Nice, Roger Kent uh, is also in. Woodburn Paul is in. And that my chat's just jumped straight up. Hang on, just wind it back a bit. So we'll find Widmer and Paul again. There he is. Is it? Paul yeah, Heaton, the Greasy Turner, is also in. Ward Wilson is in. You'll probably have one of those finished by the time I do it. read this out. Kim Prestige is in. Easy to switch. Wood Turner is in. And further down the said list, I think I said Roger Kent. I'm not sure, but Barry Chitty is in. Not about weird turnings, but with Barry. Rob from Kingsport Abrasives is also in. Kurt Ingrilli is in. Fred Gilliver. And down with Peter Kelly. Kelly K9 is in. Doug Miller, which spun round, is in. And. Mark, uh, Lucy is asking if they could have the overhead camera to see the angle of the tool better. That is over. That's, well, no, that's, that's okay. Andy Woodwork Learner's in. Martin Ford is in. Da, 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 da. Dave Oti is in. Going on down the list here. Um, Kim Precious is still watching, she says. Andrew Highwood oh, is in. Stephen Gordon is in. Martin Steve. Ford is in. Ford is in, and that appears to be those so far that is in. Susie the Swiss 
Wood Turner's asked a question. Oh, yeah, so it's already been answered. You got that now? Yeah, I know. And Pete Twisted Tree says, I know this is all about skew abuse, but it normally it's normal to tap the tool rest. Is it normal to tap the tool rest too tight with a skew? By that, yeah. <laughs> Brian of Armour yeah. Turner just joined us. Sorry, I jumped in front of you, Ruby. That's not quick okay. Get up so, that. all of this tonight is just bits of scrap wood. Okay? Just lengths of scrap wood that you have lying around. Nothing Make special. Uh, there's some pine. There's some poplar. There's a bit of tulip. Uh, that's it. The, the only I thought you may like to refer to some differences you know, good they turn, you know, the, the scrap wood. So if people think, oh, I can get that, or I can get that, or I can get that. And you well, say, well, this better than that. When I know? do the heel cut, they'll show you the difference between um, a heel cut with softer woods as opposed to heel cuts with harder woods. So just take it to round. You can do this with a spindle gouge, spindle roughing gouge, ball gouge, spindle gouge, or a skew. Now, I'm using a skew purely because it's one tool. The next one, I'll show you how to do it with a spindle roughing gouge because the heel cut, you can really only do with a skew, but everything else you can do with a variety of tools. So get it around, and then the next thing I want to do is define where the base is going to be. So I think about there... Let's have a tall one. And there. So just a couple of V cuts to define where the bucket for the Christmas tree is going to be. And we'll shape that later. And now what you want to do now is a convex curve. Uh, yeah, convex. Yeah, convex curve. Just to say Andy from AJK Woodworks to join us, and so is Frederick Hocking. Hello, Frederick Hocking. Andy. Frederick, not Frederick. Mistake. There's a horrible knot just here. I see that. You get hard and soft wood all in one piece. That could uh, be. That could be what's the word um challenging when you do a new cut. Yes, it could be. Now as you're coming towards the point, because you're creating the point, you need to be raising the handle. But you don't raise it all the way. If you go too far, you're going to have the tool skip back. Yeah, yeah it's nice just the race. So flat, flat, starting to raise, raise the handle, level contact all the way. <coughs> this point, right? Joe so Garrett has joined us. Like a like a bullet. So now for the next cut, I'm going to change the camera so you can now see. That's the shape. So it's like a bullet. All right. That's the base. Just there, that's where the first ruffle is going to go. So, with the heel point, the short point or the heel, it's the heel only. And you create that burr. Bradbury Wood Turning has just joined us as well. You just push the heel back. Pivot. Susie and Swiss Bridge Turner says question. I've read that this 
works only with wet wood. Is that true? No, nope, this is dry wood. That's, yeah. That's dry scraps, Susie. It works, Steve. It works a little better with wet wood, but you can do it with dry wood, as Mark is demonstrating. Now, the bit where the knot is, it didn't work very well, but I didn't think it would. But that gives you the idea. And then... Makes it look like the tree went through a rough storm. <laughs> Just use this. Because I don't want to knock any of the ruffles off. Just create the bucket. Use a parting tool. Just to give myself a line. And then I'm going to go with these are spirit stains by chestnut. <coughs> So a bit of green. Just like that. And then just like that. Spraying for the bucket. Well, I'm black. black. Just like that. There you go, five pound of anybody's money. Turn the lathe off before you move the tool rest in. Get the tool rest positioned. Mick Stratton has just joined us. Oh, England good. 2, Wales nil. Oh, good. Blimey, it's only just started, eh? Well, it's nice to have I miss. That's still <laughs> dropping. We all do that. Actually, if you do, if you did it left-handed, you'd have caught that with your right hand. Probably, yeah. Uh, right. So let me just they get that easy. Down. So that's the first one. Thing with these spirit stains, as soon as I hit the wood, dry. they're pretty much dry. So that's the first one. That one's a bit ropey because. Oh, second half. Yeah. It's very ropey. Have you ever have you ever tried cutting uh, in the opposite direction for those? What do you mean, make it like a proper traditional Christmas tree? Go the other way with the V cuts. Right. Yeah, I've done that but Gav's today Woodworks just joined us. He said, "Eden, I said question. What is everyone's preferred bevel angle for the skew? I assume." I'll get some different answers, but have you will have it out. My preference is 20 degrees. That means it's 10 degrees each side. The whole angle is 20, yeah? No, 40 degrees included. So oh, 40 degrees included, sorry, right, okay. 40, yeah. 40, 20 degrees each side. Yeah. So this time, spindle rough and gouge, just to take it down to round. Woodwork Warner says that he has no idea whatever opens tins. Yeah. <laughs> whatever angle the tool came with, I just sharpen it to that angle and continue. I like my skews a little bit sharper than that. Just I like on this little knife edge. Just because oh. I'm... If I need something sharper, then nice. I go. Then I go to a badan, and a badan is half the thickness the of, the, yeah. of a uh, cube. Got to say, um, big thank you today, also to Colwyn. Colwyn Way gave me a shout out during the. Uh, During his life. Wood. Yeah. A 
Pete saying 15 degrees preferred on most skews, but most skews work better at 20. And my 10 millimeter round bar unskewed skew is 25 degrees. Oh, I followed that just Pete. Well done. James Crawford's just joined us. Hello, James. This is a cleaner piece of wood. But you can tell your tool is sharp by the shavings that are coming off. Mm -hmm. Saying that, I'm just going to switch to another one. Right, so this one's going to be a shorter, stumpier tree. And as promised, Colwyn Way signature skew. Oh, I got one of those. Have you got one of those, Ruby? As a matter of fact, I do have one or two. Good man. I was going to say, what do you think of it? Oh, it's not. It's a skew. It works. Oh, yeah, but this is nice and light. Yeah, but we we Canadian women are built strong, so that's not an important factor. I know that, but... <laughs> <laughs> These are great to do. Detail. If you're doing dioramas or a little display for Christmas. They're very quick. And even for a skew, they are relatively easy and quick to do. So this is actually the other Colwyn Way signature skew. Lewis has joined us and he says he's watching quietly while he slowly dies. Yeah, he's got not very well, is he? Apparently. Oh. He's got Canadian man flu. Oh, it was. I should just take this one down a little. Get yourself some Tyler now, you? you? You'll be fine. You might say that until you actually get Canadian man flu, Terry. I won't be getting that, Ruby. Don't go to Canada. Yeah, but we might bring you over some. No, you wouldn't do that. We'd let you in the country. <laughs> Lucy Bundy Rowe is in. Hello, Lucy. Right. Hiya, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Right, so that's a better, better Ruffles one. Well, no knots okay. in that, was it? Yeah, no knots in that one. So, again, just a bit of green. You've got this set up almost like a production line there, Mark. Well, Never it is guess, kind of... You. <laughs> you hope to sell 500 of these next weekend. <laughs> and that's a better color than black. I like that. Give that a minute to flash off. And then the next will be a bigger one. We're going to do a two-part. So we'll have a separate base two-part Christmas tree. See if I can catch this one. Yeah. Kevin at 9K Creation says he doesn't want the cat Canadian flu if it comes with snow. I know the feeling, Kev. I wouldn't want it to come in with snow either. That's nice. I bet. That's, that's a nice one, Mark. That's better. That one works, doesn't it? Well, that's and they're good. actually really effective. I watched Colwyn do these at uh, Harrogate. I was his cameraman for the seminar, so I saw him do about 20 or 30 of these. And they're so quick, so effective. It's good for doing flowers as well, isn't it? Yeah, you can do a shorter one. Uh, the little flower heads and that, you know, and buds and... Just if we can. Oh, good. Right, let's quickly just do... Oh, that's coming in. Donna Love Angel Artist is in. Andy the Valley Hi, Wood Turner is in. Mr. G's in. Just because it's variety.
Susie hey, says, Mark, oh, go on. So Mark, how do you transport these to market without getting them crushed and losing the leaf? <laughs> Carefully. Carefully is the answer there. One at a time. Right. So Don't what you can do to do a flower, see you maybe put my spindle gouge away, I'll get the spindle gouge back out. So with it with these So what is this you're creating on this little piece? Well, because Terry mentioned doing flowers. So you can lovely, flowers come out lovely on there as well. You can little, do flowers, I mean, the heads of flowers like daisies and things like that. I'll just show you a quick flower. Just to show you how quick a flower can be. Same cut, so it's a heel cut. And we'll do yellow around the outside. And black in the middle. Now, obviously, you'll cut it off and show us because we had the wrong camera angle. Yeah. <laughs> Word of work learner Andy saying you, now you can you do it with with um, carbide tools. I think that'll be a bit difficult. You can't get the edge in there, can you? Yeah. You can't get a sharp edge in there. That's a little sunflower. You stick a little stalk in the back and it's lovely. Lovely little flowers. Do loads of those. We can do the floral frills bigger, smaller. So that was an unexpected flower. Just because Terry mentioned it. Um <laughs> Peter is a tree stained question. Is black and yellow your colour pair of preference? Yes. Apparently it's my <laughs> trademark. Trademark colour. I know Peter. Yeah, I'm surprised why you didn't say that. <laughs> well, for, for, right. a, for a change, you could use green in the center. Don't worry. Yeah, you could. Pink. What am I doing? There he is. Right. What airbrush are you using and how are you powering it? I have a small airbrush compressor off to the side. And the airbrushes are... Chinesium ones. Um, what, well, something from AliExpress? Yeah. Amazon. Cheapos. Amazon, yeah. Thing is, is Amazon, you can order them tonight and they tomorrow. Yeah. Actually, I know, those came from RDG. RDG. Oh, this one. Um, RDG tools. That's a big set of jaws. These are the equivalent of the tree shark jaws by Vicmark. These are the piranha jaws by Axminster. So what we're going to do is a two-part Christmas tree. Now this is a bit of um think this was poplar or this could be pine. Poplar, say, it it looks this. like poplar. Yeah, it's a bit of poplar. You should be able to tell by the smell. Well, I want to start cutting it. Right. So you use Corwin's for this one. Put it around. Quick. 
Chris Glanville is doing this. No, Chris. Does that Omar? Well, Kevin says he just got his uh, brush and compressor from Santa. Well done, Santa. For... Get on. Well, the wife got it for him, no? I just, I just need to find uh, some spirit stains. Can you not get them in Canada? No, unfortunately, you don't seem to be able to. Get on. And they won't send them from this country or any other because it's not allowed in, is it? Well, they probably will, but it'll charge you your earth. I think the problem is uh, they don't have the instructions in French as well as English. They might so if you just send them to non-France, Canada, it will work. Well, they might be classified as dangerous, too. Yeah, I think they are right. hazardous substance. So I think we can be cut there. And we're not going to put a bucket on this one. Uh, because this is going to be parted off and then put into the base, which I'll turn separately. But the heel cuts are exactly the same. So just that Heel, turn this light off, we can see better. How's that? Better. So just the heel on the tool rest, start your cut about know, seven or eight mil back from where you want to finish. And it's literally lift. You're not flat with the skew on the tool rest. You're up on the edge of the tool rest. It's just the heel. Dig it in. Create the bar. Lightly push. You would well, like to know what the speed of the lathe you're turning at, Mark. Uh, flat out, 2,300. But anything from 1,800 onwards is fine. Being a small diameter here, you need to get the lathe going fast. It's only a small diameter. Now, the nice thing with these, they don't have to be regular. The more irregular they are, the more natural they look. Apparently, England's got another goal. In case you're interested, Mark. That better word's cutting well because it's all even there. Right? Now, you're actually talking, Terry, about a rugby match, right? No, football. Right. Let's turn the speed down a little bit. World Cup. 1200. <laughs> this one's coming out really nice, actually. Quite pleased with this one. It's the World Cup um, in Qatar. Ruby. Qatar. Qatar. I don't know how to spell it. I don't, I don't, I don't know where, know where it is. to find it on a map. Somewhere in the Middle East, Far East. Uh, yes. Yeah. Let that dry off for a second. Mr. G is saying, is that the Ashley Isle skew? No, that's the Colwyn yeah. Way signature. Uh, that was the Colwyn Way, but the other one, yes. That one is the Ashley Isle. That one is the Ashley Isle. One, one inch, inch rolled edge. Yeah. Yep. Brilliant bit of care. One inch rolled edge. The lovely skew there. That's my favorite. My oh, favorite geez, workhorse, workhorse skew. But it's not my favorite skew. My favorite skew, I've got to say, is that one? one. Yes, yeah, so it's, 
the little 12 mil coming away signature. The, the detail work that you can do with that, it's got rolled edges, it's tapered both ways. It's tapered that way, tapered that way. It's just a lovely light, it's very nice for doing lots of little detail work. Right, so I need my calipers, which I bet aren't set. No, they're not. Um, but I'm going to set these to 22 mil. Sounds odd. Might have put my glasses on for this. Um, because I've got a 22 mil forcing a bit to hand. So. Now, just to add in, Mark, I would probably do most of all these cuts with a banan that you're yes. doing with the skew. Right, that's 22. For um, those that don't know, a badan is a half a skew. Well, a yeah. badan is, is kind of like a beading parting tool, whereas this one's got two bevels. A badan only has one. Right. So it's flat badan down one skew. side. Good dude, Stevens just joined us. He said that looks like a strange bow, Mark. What's going on here? <laughs> Christmas trees, Stephen. Christmas trees. Well, I did say it could be anything. It could no, be anything Mark. this time. It's Christmas trees. Brian now, if you're not... Hold on, Ruby. If you're not comfortable or happy doing this, stop the lathe and measure as you go. Brian El Tonero de Madeira is asking, what's the advantages of the tapers on the Cohen Way skew? Uh, it lightens the weight of the tool. Balance. Gives it better balance and a feel in the hand. And you can actually feel the bevel contact with the wood easier. Now, do we go, I think we need to go a black stem, don't we? Benjamin's just joined us, little Ben. Actually, we've got a bit of a bit more green in the middle there. Skimmed out, cheapskated on the green a bit. So, get that one done. We'll get the he base. Warner said he just picked up one of those tools that you're using, but it's also angled. Any idea why? Uh, well, so did you buy the new? They've angled it as a skew, you mean? It's got a skew angle on it, as you mean? Feeding and parting tool with a skew on it. Skewed grind, maybe. Ooh, so what? Somebody must have... One of these, but it's angled yeah. across. Weird. Um, I've heard of, obviously, uh, Richard Finley does these as a signature tool. And he grinds the shoulders off, or he has the shoulders ground off by crown. Makes it easier for rolling beads. And that's his preferred tool. Um, if Dan's still watching, I'm sure it's the tool that gives Dan nightmares still. Isn't it, Dan? He's watching. Steve that's Gordon. Is Stephen Gordon has just joined us. Steve. actually one of my favorite. Oh, no, he's he's getting Oh, Stephen, a production worker, uh, production turner. He's also a fellow member of the AWGB committee. Good evening, Stephen Gordon. Again. He's a training and development officer. Apparently, uh, Dan says the lathe was too low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just because he's Dan. another nine footer. Dan, no, it wasn't. I'm just going to turn the speed down on this because the ruffles on this are really nice. Don't want to and he says he him. likes his Dave Dolby round skew. So. No, can't give, can't wriggle out of it, Dan. Simple as that. Brian Green has joined us, and he wants to know what everybody thinks about a record power coronet envoy. I've used them lathe. quite well. Lovely lathe. Right. So that's the tree. That came out really nice, actually. Doesn't that look like a Christmas tree? Pity you cut the bucket off it. 
Ah, but I'm about to make the bucket. I know. <laughs> right. So. This is if you want to do these as a centerpiece. The little ones um, can actually do is My wife was saying to me the other day, we should get a Christmas tree. I said, well, I'll make you one then. But I might just get one like four foot long and stick it on the lathe and turn her a tree like that. Let's have a laugh when she tries to hang on the decorations. Right. So this is going to be the bucket. Just round this off again with the skew. Torres 2i, 3 millimeters peak. How much do you say your trees for approximately, asks Susie? Those, 3 pounds. 3 pounds each for the little rougher ones. The two part ones, um, where is it? This one, time. A, this one is a two part one. That's actually a separate base. Separate base to the tree. That would be five pound. It's all scrap wood. It takes minutes. It takes longer to talk about it than it does to do it. Mark, do you ever put a finish on them? Over no. top? No. I don't do anything else with them. This is all the treatment they get. Because hopefully, hopefully, they only last one season and you can sell them all again. Yeah. Year. These, are, these are good marketing. You only make them every year. So with a spindle couch, Drury's Wood Turning has joined us. Hello, Drury. Susie thinks that's rather cheap to sell them that price. Uh, well, it depends. These, these sort of things, these are, hour. these are like little impulse buys that go into a shop for Christmas. Um, kids like them. Kids love them. Mum and dad say, Mum, can I have a Christmas tree? And yeah, it's a couple of quid. Yeah. And easy peasy well, sale. When you do craft shows, you should have a variety of things at different levels of price, like from expensive right down to inexpensive. Mm. That way you yeah. can uh, attract more people. Yeah. Did I put it back up there? No. Can we see what I did with the force in a bit? Music question would be easier this time. Hey. No, we didn't see. Is that it? No. You okay. haven't used it yet, so it's where you no, left no, it no. before. You were going to use it. Can I put it in my pocket? No. Didn't put it in my pocket. Did it fall on the floor? It's right here in front of me. I, you can bet. There it is. Donna says she wants to learn how to weld so that she can make a metal tree so that you can put her display of her Christmas trees on or Christmas decorations on. Sell. So, go talk to a welder, Donna. Better take a night school class. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, talk to a welder and say, please, can you teach me? Right. I'm just... Uh... Drury's, Drury's saying he's very excited. He, she's very excited. Just ordered, no, have ordered an Axminster Professional 406 Lathe, which is coming soon. Oh, 
Lovely lathe. That's the Line smaller one in. less. Smaller one to one. Terry's got, but it's the same lathe that Pete's got. Lovely lathe. I, I hope you're tall. It is a good lathe. You want Ruby? I hope he's tall. Oh, well. Actually, my lathe's quite, quite nice. It, perfect for me now. I found with so Pete's lathe, I was working almost at shoulder height. Yeah, well, I thought I was a hobbit. Dun, dun, dun. And just because I'm in the mood for showing off. Gotcha. Don't shoot too off. No, I'm going to show off a little bit. No. Do it with one hand behind your back. Actually, do it no. with the hand behind your back. Turn around. <laughs> Posh bucket. Now, if someone really wanted to, they could also texture on their buckets. Yep. Or decorative lines with uh, burn marks in it. You can burn the lines in. Yeah. Paint paint half the bucket a different color and the lines a different color. So depends on what you're doing. It. Mr. G says that he makes the little Christmas trees and gives them away at work. At Christmas, just as gifts, then later in the year, he gets more custom. That's mm. a good idea. It is. Now, what color would people like this bucket? We've got blue, royal blue, black, red, or we're kind of green because the tree's green. So blue, royal blue, yellow, or red for this bucket. Or a, or a combination of each. Oh, yeah. No. What color red. Really. Well, you can leave the white line in the middle and you can paint each side. You can burn two lines there to stop the paint flowing up the lines. So if you put two burn lines there, that'll stop it flowing. You can do one side one color, one side the other. That will work. Well, so far you've got a royal red, a gold, a yeah. royal blue, can't have gold. Red. No, can't have gold. Red. I haven't got gold. I haven't got gold. Listen, I'm be red. Answers on the enough, postcard. There was enough reds to make it red. So red on the top. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Terry, Tim blue wants, on the bottom. Tim blue wants bottom. to know if you have hobbit feet. <laughs> I might have hairy feet, Kim, but you ain't going to find out. Ah. And I'm not hey, going Kim, to tell. Wait till we get him in the, wait till we get him in the hot tub. He's not going to tell me. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> Apparently, Barry Chitty says that he's had to raise his 406 up five inches. No, he's another lanky one. Jury, jury word turn says he's five foot 11. So that'll be a good light for him, won't it? Just undercutting this. Ever so slightly. Double cuts so it doesn't bind. Andrew from White Reaching Blue over says, safely. And caught that one. <laughs> Andy's right. Cornish Creations is in. Hello, Andy. Right. Hi, Andy. So, that one. We can't see it, Mark. There. Okay, turn it back. Put yeah. it together. Better. There you go. But that's actually a two part. And while I'm here, here for the salesman, <laughs> I'll just open the They're all up for sale. <laughs> while you're here, they're all up for sale. Uh, what am I going to use? So a bit of O3 activator, a bit of O3 thick. Few drops. So, Mark, are you storing these in the fridge? Uh, no, because my my workshop's 
Cold enough. Cold enough. What the trees so, maybe or the Yeah. No, the glue at the base. Mm. Bit of activator on the stem. That's Done. fixed. There you go. Not that a bad tree beautiful. that actually for Yeah, very nice, okay. Mark. Like I say, these, I'll do another one, but these trees don't have to be uniform. In fact, the less uniform they are, Better. the more realistic they look. So I'll do, do a slightly fatter one now, shall we? Slightly fatter, like Terry. Like me, slightly <laughs> fatter. I don't mind, it's all good living. Money well spent, I reckon. Or so I'll tell the wife, it's money well spent. They've not got knot in it as well, mind. Yeah. Fight this one. I'm going to really try and curl this one. So I'm just going to get this round again. Now, Susie makes a good point. She says the trees would also look nice painted white or left natural for a snow look. And in the craft store, you can sometimes buy artificial snow. Yeah. And after you've turned them green, you can add some uh, snow add some highlights snow. on the branches. Steve Gordon says, very effective, mate. Okay, buddy. Right, so... Him agrees with Susie, you should uh, paint them white or leave them natural. Do you use these jaws a lot, Mark? Sorry, Ruby, say that again. Do you use those jaws a lot? I do now, I've got them. Yeah. Are you doing the sale? Like twenty five percent off, didn't they? Friday, Black Friday, or whatever. Yeah, I, um, I'm actually a, a big fan of Richard Raffin, and I, I love watching him. So am I actually. And it, he, he uses Vic Mark jaws on Vic Mark chucks, and I was seriously contemplating getting a Vic Mark chuck just so I could get the shark sure. jaws that he uses, and then I saw these piranha jaws. By Axminster, and they're almost identical. So, got these instead. I have several, two or three uh, Vic Mark chucks, and I find they work very well. Andy Woodwork Learners asked, "Is the O3 glue worth the higher cost?" I, I don't know. Yes. Yes, it is. I watched a couple of videos oh. from Richard Raffin yesterday. It was really good. I hope you guys... Believe me when I say, and you should know by now, I won't endorse a product unless I, A, believe in it, and B, it has to work. It has to work. And I won't, I won't use it if it doesn't work. And I won't promote it if it doesn't work. And I've got to say, O3 are as good as Starbond, cheaper than Starbond, and they're UK based. And Drew, you're saying that's why he got the lathe. He, she got the lathe. In the sale, it was 2,400, ended up paying 1,600. That's a good price. Right. So. We've done that one. I think how much use you would get out of those jaws would depend on what kind of turning we do most of the time. Mm. Yeah.
like anything really, really. Right, so I've done the bucket already. Now, uh, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, I wanna try and do deeper. No, no, Ben. Would the old three glue be any good for a pen finish? Yes. We've had this discussion, me and Guy. Yeah, Hughes. Yes, Hughes. <laughs> I think you might be wanting you up. Ben, you need to behave. Yeah, not worry, Ben. All good things come in small packets. Yeah, just remember dynamite comes in small packages. Too. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Just poison, says Lucy. Should we have a red tree or a green tree? Yeah, trees are green. Well, how about could be an autumn color, can it? How about white? Old. How about what? White. white. I haven't got white. No, I don't what do white, got? <laughs> I'll do green again. Do you have any silver? No. You could do it dark. You could do it because uh, some of the fir trees are blue, aren't they? They're blue looking. Yeah, they have a green and they're blue green. Like a dusty green, blue real over deep the top. blue green, aren't they? Blue first or so green first? Then. Yeah, I would say blue. Uh, I would say green first, and then not too much blue. Just hold it back a bit. Green first, but the under color, and then just. That's it, and then a nice deep blue over the top, but not too deep to cover the green, if you know what I mean. Like, like a royal blue, yeah? Yeah. Just gen just but don't not too don't flood it obviously because it'll kill the green, but because uh, some some of the pines are really bluey green, aren't they? Well that's what they a, call a, a blue fur. A blue fur, yeah. A little bit more blue. Just a little bit more. Or a blue spruce. Blue yeah. And you see them sometimes, they're really good, don't they? Yeah. I'll try and recreate that in my oil painting sometimes. It looks red, lovely when you get it right. Red bucket this time. Yeah, red bucket. Yeah, red bucket list. Bing. Peter Hicks has joined us. What's the time? Coming up the hour. Brilliant. It's me the last one. Peter Hicks says, never done this before, i.e. live, never chatted. Colwyn oh, said, pop over and watch you. Peter. Hello, oh. Peter. Welcome aboard. Now, Thank you very much, Peter. That's very kind of you. Yep. He's now in the chat. So the next thing, Peter, is get a camera and go live. <laughs> Hope you enjoy it, mate. Just drop the speed a little bit. Don't need to hand over just the top right. So let me just change camera a sec. So you guys can see this because I'm really sure that's a good angle. Right. So nothing up, up under here. No, the sleeve is down a little bit. You could tighten yeah, it up with the Keep this area clear. Be aware of this area. Reach over. Have your hand here waiting for the piece. Go in with the parting tool. Here you go. And it should just fall into your hand. You can, if you're ambidextrous, part off with the left hand and catch it with your right if you want uh, to do that. No, change the camera again, now, Mark. Yeah, I'm going to. Now, do you never put anything on the lathe to protect it from the spray? No, because it's, it's, 
You're so directional, so directional with the spirit stains with an airbrush. That you don't really get any overspray, Ruby. So there's that one with. Maybe move it a little to your right. I'm going to go with that camera instead. So there you are. Andy, the Valley Wood Turner's got to go. He's got a night shift. He's up at 4 a.m. Good boy. But Thank you, right. Andy, for popping in, mate. Appreciate it. Yep. So if I put that there. And then if I just uh, just a question mark from me. Yep. Not that you need to do it now, but for those people that can't use a skew, is there any other tool like the side of a um, gouge that could do the same job to make the trees? You could do it with a spindle gouge. Because you can do a skew cut with a spindle gouge. Um, I can just show you quickly while you look at the forest. You can, <laughs> you can do it with a beading parting tool, and you can also do it. With well, I meant, I meant, yeah, yeah. Of course you can, but but for those that can't use it, or I don't have a beading parting tool, just a parting tool. I suppose you could do it with a parting tool, but it's very narrow and it might be difficult to do with that because you couldn't get it. Right. You got to so, get in. The edging underneath in you. Let me just grab it. I think I'd suggest taking a class with uh maybe the wing of a, of a long grind spindle gauge could do it. But you've got to get the toe it at the point in, haven't you? So if I take this piece just a thought, that's all. For those that don't know or don't like the skill, can't use one yet. I'm not asking well, myself I'm... anyway, trust me. Asking for your benefit. All I'm doing is getting this to round. Just put. John Foster says, "Cheers, Mark. Really enjoyed that." Thank you. Does that camera zoom in at all, Mark? Sorry, Ruby, what was that? Does that camera zoom in at all? Uh, yes. That's as far as it goes. Okay. Or I can do this one. Right, Better. so, spindle gouge. Uh, I didn't really. No, I, I don't know whether you could use another tool like a gouge because people are maybe just the wing of it bringing in tight, you know. Oh, there you go. That's working. Yeah. I've never tried it. I thought about it the other day, but gotta be, I'll, I'll use gotta the be, tool, you know. Flute is almost completely closed. Yeah. You're really right tight. And you've got to dig in with the point. Bob's workshop, Bob Amarant from New Jersey Wood Turners, or NJ Wood Turners, is in the house. He says, no, Bob. It doesn't. That worked. No, that worked in a fashion, eh? It's the first time you tried it. <laughs> yeah. Tend to get away. Not bad. With practice. You could, you could do a lot better with a skew. For those of you who do not use a skew or can't and want to make some, try with that then. Just a thought. Because you could. Because with a skew, you've really got that core. Yeah, that's what I say. You dig in the you dig in the thing right in, aren't you? I wonder if another like the B dam would do it, but not a lot of people got a B dam tool. To be honest, I know it's Ruby's favourite. It's not very favourite in this country, by the sound of things. Pete's probably got one in his workshop, buried somewhere. In the, Just in the tool that you because have. you can. With a smaller skew, go a smaller skew and put a captive ring on it. Go on, there you go. 
Mark, do you know how to put a star on the top of your tree? Hold on. Not while it's spinning around. Yes, while it's spinning uh, around. Too big. I was trying oh, to do a trying to do the do. tiny trying to do the tiny tree challenge that's been going around on Instagram. Is there? I didn't know that. I don't use it. Uh, I think Richard Raffin's one. It is less than a millimeter tall for a Christmas tree. Yeah. Is there? Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> that's a challenge then. I might yeah. do a workshop tomorrow. So, <laughs> that one works, but it's better with a better with a skew than it was with a. Yeah, Chris is. I did see your pop up live today, Doug. Um, right, let's bring some of these over. They are a bit fragile. There's no getting away from it. They are That's a bit fragile. So they break up for next year. So they, so so they break when they get put away by the family. They get broken. And they go, oh, mm. no. Let's go back and buy them from that lovely wood turner we met. You may have to change your camera angle. We can't right. see them. I know. I'm doing the show. I'm going to show them up. So there's that one. That's a red base. I don't know why it looks orange on that camera. That's probably the best one I've done all day. This looks good. Rob Copperell has just joined us in a Rob. And that's probably the second best one, which is... That was nice. That's not bad. There you go. Very and nice. these are literally just a quick and easy 10-minute project with a bit of scrap wood. Set yourself up, make 20. If you make 20 out of scrap wood, and sell them for three quid each. Even if you sell them a pound quid. each. Even if you sell them a pound each. If you sell yeah, them, even if you just over. take them down, sell them to a shop for a pound each. Let's make twenty quid for wood that you were going to throw away. And then, that one well, you could you could also take small square pieces, paint them up, and make them look like presents, and slide them underneath. Yeah. The only thing I was going to say, yeah. the only thing I was going to say is for people. If you're not very keen or good with the skew or you're worried about it, do that as practice before you start doing your other turning. Get yeah. it in your hand. Practice it. Use it. Get Just some try of those. It. A little screw in. Um, little slice. Screw in hooks. And if you drill a little hole in the end with a pin drill, screw one of those in. A bit of Christmas ribbon that can hang on a Christmas tree. As a decoration, a they don't wait. Tree. tree for a tree. Now, if and you screw up like the first Terry tree, said, you just make a smaller one. You know, it's practice. Use it. Just use it. Like Terry said, they don't last a year. So next year, you've got to make them all over again for everybody who bought them for you for this year. Happy days. Happy days. Right. Thank you ever so much. It's not a very long one tonight. Not a very exciting one. Well, I've got lots but it of was. I was here. Do. Ruby, oh, Ruby and I were here. Of Ruby, course, it's Ruby exciting. Mary were here, yes. That's great. Um, the important got... hobbits were here. Yeah, that's correct, <laughs> Ruby. The important I've, hobbits. I've got a lot of... I've got a... Now, when this finishes, I have to pack my workshop up into my car, go on my way to do a demonstration tomorrow in Trowbridge. So, uh, well, we hope very... it goes really well for you, Mark. Thank you. It will. I, will. I, I have no doubt will. that it will. Just chill. Yeah. We'll be fine. Might even be watching. <laughs> so that's the workshop. There you go. And if he is watching, there's the cabinet. <laughs> and with the fire extinguisher. Your beard shaved off where you get there's always safety hazard. No, it's not long <laughs> enough. It's fine. I can't shave the beard off. Kim likes the beard. She ain't watching. She's gone there. She probably. She's gone. Yes. <laughs> She was here just was now, amazed. though. She was here. I was amazed she ago. stayed as long as she did. Coronation Street must have finished. Um, right, so a couple of thank yous. Thank you to Ruby. Thank you to Terry. Another, again, thank you to Colwyn for giving me a shout out today during the Axminster Live. Um, and thank you to, <coughs> excuse me, Wayne from O3, Wayne Diedrichs from O3 Adhesives for. Uh, for the glue? And, everything. and for the glue. Oh, so, Andy Werberg Lerner said beards are better than plastic surgery. Yeah, I'll tell you, I had the multitude of sins. 
Keep I don't going. think that's going to help me much. Later. It might, might not help you, Ruby. <laughs> right. So I do hope that even if you're scared of the skew, you can do all the first part with a ball gouge, a spindle roughing gouge, or a spindle gouge. Shape the tree. And then doing that heel cut doesn't matter if it goes wrong. Get it right in because tight. Get it nice and tight. Get the corner dug in. Lift up that burr of wood. Push it to the back. Go a little bit further each time. And it doesn't matter if they're not perfect because it just makes you know, it more natural. You can spray it with uh, spray adhesive and then sprinkle sparkles on top as well. Good. Yep. You can do all that. Lots of things you can do. But the best thing you can do is practice and do it. But have a go. It's the right time of year right there. to be having a practice with those. And then in the spring, you can practice doing the flowers. It is, Lucy. That was the first time I'd ever done the flower tonight. So that's why I looked around. That's why I said got to do the it. Idea. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Terry. Right, right, okay. I'm going to go. Thank you, everybody. Take care. See you all soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Good thanks night. Thanks for going aboard. See you all again.